Thank you very much. Good morning. As the exercise seminar, we are in the midst of the Congress of the Arab Spring, and in the midst of the Washington Seminar, we are talking about Kurdish and the Kurdish and the Kurdish and the Kurdish. گیشتن کردان با آرمان جنوان کر. دباوری آورده اف نکوکی نفخویی یه کردان بونن خوشیه که دم درج جبوی کردان بگیشتی؟ I'm not sure a medical metaphor is the correct one to use, but it's clear that divisions among Kurds have been very long lasting. If one reads the arguments and analyses of historians in the 19th century, the Kurds are described as divided, warlike, seriously tribal. It looked at the beginning of this century, the 21st century, that many of those historic divisions had been put to one side. The Kurds united in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, the PKK began to adopt a more political and less violent strategy. Opportunities emerged for the Kurds of Syria. That was not true, of course, for the Kurds of uh, Iran. But what's striking to an outside observer is how easily internal Kurdish divisions erupt and how easily they're exploited by external powers including powers outside the Kurdistan right. region itself. So if any of the Kurds in any part of Kurdistan are to achieve their objectives, they have to learn to accommodate one another, to coalesce successfully, and not to pursue their own objectives at the expense of other Kurds. Bally. بله برز و بخوایی بحث کرد ناکوکی ان کردان گلکی اشکرنه به باوری او افیک جبر بر دوامیا کلونیال بنا کردستانو نتوا کرده یان سدم این دنیان گرینگتر هنر. Well, obviously, external powers and including powers in which Kurds find themselves trapped do their best to exploit internal Kurdish divisions. But those divisions are real and they have consequences. So inside the Kurdistan region, the PUK and the KDP fought a civil war in the mid-1990s. The lasting legacy of that civil war manifested itself in 2017 when a faction of the PUK allied with Baghdad and Iran uh, to prevent the success of the referendum. Inside Syria, the Kurds are divided between the PKK-led Kurds and uh, other Kurds. And that inhibits, even as uh, the autonomy of Rojava is in deep danger, uh, any successful coalition among Kurds. The PKK seeks above all to be a monopolist of the Kurdish cause in Turkey. And that means that Kurdish political parties can't even successfully mobilize all of the Kurdish vote. About half of Kurds vote for pro-Kurdish nationalist parties inside Turkey. So the internal competition among Kurdish parties, right. their, their battle for influence deeply destabilizes each Kurdish movement. Bally. Bally, Briz, uh, as you said, I'm going to start a seminar with the seminar there. بحث مترسیا خاکر یا جا آوابونا هریما کوبگوتن او و نوی و کربو سلیمانستان چه ماهون هزار دکن کو کرد بر به پرچبونا کزیده تر و دچن او نه بر به یکگرت نیبه. I think that the difficulties inside Iraq caused by the coronavirus pandemic, the collapse in the price of oil, the difficulties that exist between Baghdad and Erbil. All of these are creating further tensions between Baghdad and Iraq. And inside Iraq, uh, sorry, excuse me, inside Kurdistan, there are unresolved tensions going back to 2017. One faction of the P PUK, it seems to me, would be happier governing Sulaymaniyah than being part of a common Kurdistan region. And there, so there's a serious danger of a Sulaymaniyah stand. The only people who would benefit from that, of course, are uh, the 
Arabs in Baghdad and the Iranian government. So resolving those fundamental conflicts that exist between Suleimaniyah and Erbil are vital for the stability of the Kurdistan region. Well. بله هون وا کہ شارزای کی کاروبار ان کردان ج دور وجی هر چ قاج دور وجی به هون چاودیری انا کوکین پارتین کردین لهریما کردستان جی دکن سدم اوان نا کوکیان بدیتنا و چیه هون دکارن وگرین ان سرچ I think the the fundamental um, difficulties arise from two sources one of course the decision of Iran Turkey in particular, to exploit internal Kurdish divisions. But secondly, inside the Kurdistan region, if we look back over a long period of time, over the last 30 years, the PUK is clearly the most internally divided party. It has broken up into distinct new movements. Goran and indeed new generation arguably flowed from the breakup of the PUK. The internal divisions inside that party and the weaknesses and fears of key leaders inside that movement mean that they're so terrified of the KDP, the Kurdistan Democratic Party, becoming the dominant party in the Kurdistan region, that they will make alliances outside Kurdistan to preserve their local power. Alliances in Baghdad, alliances in Tehran. So the difficulty is that one of the historic parties has broken up into internal factions and can't sustain itself with a significant section of Kurdish public. In my view, it's that internal division that is the cause of fundamental instability inside the Kurdistan region. Well, بله برای از پیچه که وگرم دما اپراسیون ترکیه الهمبری روشوای کردستانه گلک روشنبی رو سیاست مدار این ولات این روشوایی هندزانن سالا بوری لسر پارستن روشوای کردستان جیریش ترکیه هفنرین بون لی ناکوکیه که کرد نابرا پارتیه که تیا دموکراتیک پیه دو انجمن انشتمانی کرد لسوریه انه کسی ده هیه حتا مروفت کاره بیجه بنا بینکاریه امریکای جیهی ناب تمامی لحف نهاتنه هون پاشروش روشوای کردستان دوی دمی ده چواد بینن I'm afraid it's looking very grim for Rojava. It looked a few years ago that there was still a serious possibility that the Kurds of Syria could negotiate autonomy with the regime. And perhaps it would be the case that jointly Russia and America would prevent Turkey from uh, invading in nor into northern Syria. Unfortunately, that has not happened. And even inside these very tough conditions with an existential threat to the survival of Rojava, the Kurds of Syria are unable to unify fully. And I would say that my own view, it's a personal opinion on this matter. The PKK is the dominant actor among Kurds in this area. The PKK absolutely seeks a fundamental monopoly over Kurdish representation strategy and policy. They were unable, in effect, to decide to let the Kurds of Syria go their own way separately from the Kurds of Turkey. Had they done so, I think there's a, a small opportunity that the autonomy of Rojava would have been protected. But as it is, the PKK's strategy enabled Turkey to have the excuse to, en to enable it to go into northern Syria without too much international opposition. Though, it's very important here not to entirely blame the Kurds of Syria. The fundamental reason they're in such a, a difficulty at the moment is because of the chaotic strategy of President Trump of the United States, who initially appeared uh, to uh, promise to protect the position of the Kurds of Syria. And of course, that, that promise has proven to be hollow is significantly withdrawn American forces from Syria, and that's why Kurds face their current predicament. Vale. But my own view is that unless something dramatic happens, it is likely that the Ba'athist regime in Syria and Turkey uh, will jointly 
defeat the project of autonomy in Russia. بله و بحثا حکومت ترکیه کرا ز یک سر جور بر دوام بکم نها گلک ناوندن اکادمیک یین مدیایی جی حتی گلک سیاست مدارن ولاتن روشوایی جی رخنه این توند لدستلاداری ها ترکیه به تایبتی ها اردوغان دکن ده بکو ده پاشا روشه که نیزیک ده جبای چار سرکرین ها پرسا کردان لور لباکور کردستان و ترکیه در فتح که باش در فتح پیش و به احتمال ده بینن I think it's the case that all European governments realize that Erdogan has destroyed the democratic promise of Turkey. The Americans have noticed that Turkey has made an alliance with the Russians for the supply of some of its weaponry. Turkey has uh, actively involved itself in the Libyan civil war. It's invaded northern Syria, Rojava, uh, conquered Afrin. It's invaded uh, what uh, the rest of the world regards as northern Iraq, but we know as the Kurdistan region. So Turkey is extensively military, militarily spread. It now has problems with all of its neighbors. Uh, at the beginning of this century, it was the policy of the AK party in Turkey to have no problems with any of its neighbors. Now it has problems with all of its neighbors. On top of that, Turkey now has a devastatingly severe economic recession. So at this juncture, Erdogan, in my view, is in a more precarious position than he has ever been. So the key question for Kurds is, what should they do with this opportunity? In my view, it's very clear that the PKK's military strategy in Turkey has not worked and is not working. Right. So it's my personal view, it's merely my personal opinion, that if the PKK were to adopt an exclusively peaceful strategy in Turkey, that does not mean an immediate surrender, but if it committed to an exclusively peaceful strategy, then I think the opportunity for Western support European support and American support for the enhancement of democratic rights in Turkey would be considerable. Well. بله برای از از پیچه کی وگرم دیرو که هند زانن د پیمانا سه ورده سوزا آواکرنا دولتا کردستان دابونا کردان لی اف یک د پیمانا لوزانه ده هاته هلوشاندن روژا بیستو چاره ویمه بیرانینا سال وگرا امزکرنا پیمانا لوزانه بو ترکیه جوه پیمانه نرازیه د باوری آوده د بکو جاره کدن در فتک بو سرخوابونا کردستان وره پیش؟ Yes, I do think there will be a further opportunity, but it's not clear when that will happen. We do know that both Syria and Iraq are highly unstable. So there will, become an, there will come another opportunity for the Kurds of Syria and the Kurds of Iraq to establish a functioning autonomy, possibly subsequently an independent state. But for that to work, they must build their own political institutions successfully with maximum cooperation with their fellow Kurds, as well as minorities in their neighborhoods, for there to be subsequent success. As for an independent state in Turkish Kurdistan, I think that is increasingly unlikely. And the reason is that the Kurdish population Turkey, partly because of previous wars and expulsion strategies by Turkish governments, that population is now spread across Turkey much more extensively than it used to be. So there are Turks, excuse me, there are Kurds in Western Turkey, there are very large numbers of Kurds in Istanbul, and that makes the carving out of a Kurdish state, I think, much less likely than it would have been. That doesn't mean that there won't be an opportunity for some form of territorial autonomy in what Turkey calls its southeast and most Kurds call 
northern Kurdistan. Well. از جاره که دن بگرم هریما کردستان و عراق هندزانن لگوری ماده یا صد و چلیا دستور عراق دوی سینور این پاریزگه این عراق ورن ریک خستن پرسا کرکوک و جسدی چل آخا کردستان جیل عراق وره یکالی کرن حتی انها یکالی نبویه کرد نها دکارن بوه یکی چه بکن بدیت ناوه بتای بتیجی سر کمار عراق دکتر برهم صالح That's a good question and it's a tough question. Obviously, the position of the Kurds today is much weaker than it was in September 2017. If one looks at the constitution of Iraq, it is the duty of the president of Iraq to protect the constitution. Not one bit of the constitution, all of it. So Kurds have to ask themselves the reasonable question, what is the point of having a Kurdish president if that president never does anything to protect the constitution as a whole? So in my view, it's perfectly reasonable for the Kurds of Turkey to ask President Saleh to have clear initiatives to resolve the disputed territories, including Kirkuk. He is the principal vehicle through which a possible peaceful and democratic resolution might occur. However, it may well be that that won't work. It may well be that as a result of the events of 2017, particularly in October, that Kurds have to accommodate themselves to the fact that they may not get Kirkuk back, at least not for a very long time. So in my view, it's more important that they consolidate the existing Kurdistan region, and make it work as best as possible, partly to make it an attractive place for Kirkuk and the other disputed territories to join at some future juncture. Well, Brezoleri Hundazanan Hina Destura Harima Kurdistan is in Nahatian Visandan. نیچر وان بارزانی سرکه هریما کردستان د گوتارا خویا دست به کار کردنیده. او یک وقت یک جکارن خوین گرینگ دست نشان کرد لی حتی آنها تشتک ناتی کردن. گلو دستور دکاره سدم که کم کردن جه بلا بونا کردان به لهریما کردستان. I think making a constitution does offer an opportunity for unifying. Kurds in the Kurdistan region. Yes, there are a whole series of questions that divide Kurds. Like any other nation, uh, the Kurds have internal divisions based on religion, language, dialect, class, and so on. Nevertheless, making their own constitution, making one that will work for Kurdistan inside Iraq and work for a future independent Kurdistan is a vital part of achieving cohesion inside the Kurdistan region. One of the fundamental questions is whether to have a presidential system or to have a parliamentary system in which the prime minister, and the cabinet are the key executive actors. In my view, those questions could be resolved and they could be successfully put to the people of Kurdistan in a referendum. Indeed, that if there are particular questions that the parties themselves cannot resolve, then a scrupulously fair set of questions could be put to the Kurdish public to decide those matters. If the process of constitution making is transparent, open, invites public participation, it provides an opportunity for the young as well as the old, males and females, to seriously engage what they would like a future Kurdistan to look like, that could be entirely positive. And by doing it, Kurds will protect themselves from future efforts, both by Baghdad and outside powers, well. to weaken the existing economy that they have. Well, well there is, uh... جبوی دولت که به هز امدزانن کو روبره کی گله کی برفره نزیده گرینگه یا گرینگ به هزی یا آبوری و یک گرتن آنافخواییه گلو هریما کردستانه دکاره ببه او جه کو میناکه کوکه سنگاپور وک نمونه لیچه ببه 
But I don't think Kurdistan can become like Singapore because unfortunately it has no water around it, no ocean, no sea. Uh, but I do think Kurdistan can become a successful economic unit. Uh, it's clearly open and deliberately open to foreign investment. It now has an increasingly more educated public that's attractive to outside investors. It has a potentially serious advantage in the neighborhood in regards to agriculture. And if there could be a successful development of agriculture, that would be excellent. It is a grim moment economically in Kurdistan, particularly because of the decline of global oil revenue. But that's to be taken as an opportunity to try and diversify the economy which will protect Kurdistan when oil ceases to be an important part of the global economy. That is coming down the road. That will be with us um, definitely within 30 years and perhaps earlier. So it's important for Kurdistan to learn to diversify outside of a carbon-based economy. That doesn't mean they have to give up oil and gas. I'm not suggesting that for one moment. But they have to prepare for the, the moment of diversification. بله. دستورا راقید سال دو هزار و پنجان ده هنک ماف دان کردان به تایبتی دوار انرژی ده هون آگه دارن لی بله بغدا نهاد ویده میده دا خوازه همو پترول و گازه هریما کردستانه دیگه بناری نوه دوی هریما کردستانه دوی روشه ده چه بگه؟ The Kurdistan region should, should not, in my view, abandon any of the constitutional rights it won the constitution of 2005. Under that constitution, Kurds have the right to develop their own new oil and gas fields, which they have done with some success. I don't think those rights should be abandoned. What I do think is worth pursuing and negotiating is trying to get an agreement on a federal uh, Iraq-wide law on the distribution of revenues one that would be stable and would not be subject to uh, periodic changes by decisions made arbitrarily in the Baghdad parliament. So Kurds can negotiate over fair distribution of revenues, transparent distribution of revenues, and they can consider, I, I think there's nothing incompatible with the constitution in this, they can consider arrangements for joint exports, joint monitoring of exports, distribution of the revenues from those exports. So yes. I think Kurdistan should stick to its constitutional rights and as best as possible, preserve those in negotiation with Baghdad. It's not as if Baghdad's position is extraordinarily powerful. It's internally divided. It has a, a new prime minister with a, a clean record. Uh, it's going to be the case very shortly, in my view, that there will be a new American administration, probably led by President Biden. And I think his outlook will be favorable towards the preservation of Kurdistan's uh, constitutional rights. So there's only a short time for Kurdistan to hold on once the new American administration comes in in January of 2021.